let's talk about mastering your blue scale positions. I'm going to do all five. Technically, you can do six, but we'll do five rooted off those main notes. Um, let's get stuck in. So I'm going to do the, all these in G. Now, if we run our G minor scale, just a little bit of background knowledge, which is our G minor key, we get two flats. We get B flat and E flat. So G, A, B flat, C, D, E flat, F, and G. If we wanted to turn that into our minor pentatonic, all we have to do is take out the second and sixth note. So we now get G, B flat, C, D, F, G, and that's the shape which a lot of you guys would know as your minor pentatonic, yep. Yeah? Um, now, as we go through this one, when we're adding the blues, we're just adding the flat fifth interval. So we now get G, B flat, C, D flat, D, F, G. And of course, same up the octave. When you're running through the positions, we're just starting off each consecutive note. So technically, I'll call this position one. This is position two. Position three. Position four, we're going to go not off the blues note. And position five. But the problem with that is, really, I'm just in the same position the whole time, hey. But you can get the idea of we're just starting off those different root notes each time, but traveling up the neck. So going all the way through, um, I'll put these blues positions up on the screen too, so you don't have to worry about watching my fingers so intently. But let me play these relatively slow. Pretty stale too, right? So here's your minor blues. <laughs> Starting off the next note, which is the B flat, this is what's coined our major blues. Position two, ready? Right, there are your big ones, major minor, yeah? Now, position three, let's have a look. I'll come back and backtrack and show you guys a couple of tips on these too. Alright, position four, keep climbing. Final position. And then really, if you want to go one more, you're just back to your start. Full 12 frets up. Uh, up the neck, another octave. So let's talk about a couple of uh, just shape identifiers there. I, you know, I'm big on knowing the notes and making sure you know where the intervals are. Um, and that's really how you understand those scale shapes because if we start those off different strings and people, you know, just recognize them by shapes, you're going to get into some issues. Not all the time, but a lot of the times you'll run into problems just knowing the shapes. Check this out for me. So if we go through, say, the minor blues, right? Let's pick one of those notes. Let's pick the C. So if I start the pattern from here, just one octave there, or I guess I'll add the blues note too. Hard not to. Now, if you look at where that was up here, you'll notice the pattern starts the same, right? And it has to because it's the same set of notes. But where I was saying you run into trouble here is if we started off a C, but say on a different string, right? It doesn't sound right. Because of that B string tuning, tuned in a third, we've got to go across a fret to accommodate. Alright, so it's different. But then it's like, okay, well, if we just do that, then I guess technically we're just really in the major blues shape, right? So you get all these little crossovers of positions and shapes and whatnot. So a really good way to do this, obviously learn your shapes going across the neck. Do them in not necessarily different keys, but different strings. Um, the different keys will come as you start playing through different things. But if you start off, you know, doing them all off the E string, off the A string, off the D string, blah, 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 you're not going to get the full range of the shape. So your brain's just going to be staying fresh, starting on those different sets. Um, one thing that I really like to do for students as well to practice traveling through these shapes is picking yourself a little limit of the shape. So why don't we pick, say, like the bottom two strings, right? Let's play the shapes. Moving across ways. Just with those bottom sets, yeah? Whoops. Right, 
Now, with the blues notes and stuff in there as well, I'm trying to keep that pentatonic just so you can see these where they sit. Pentatonic. 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 I'm sure you know those shapes here, yeah, all those sounds. Now, if we look at where those blues notes sit, because this is really important, might well, get one there, because it'll be, yeah. There's one, I know, then keep going. And then ready. But setting yourself a little target like that is a really cool way to start looking at your shapes in different methods. Of course, that's more going horizontally across the neck, but turn them into little sequences, yeah? And you'll probably find you get some really nice phrases that you actually like, you know what I mean? You can do that for days. Um, and then start looking at different sets. So if you can do the bottom two, why don't we try this time, you know, do the G and the B string, for example. So now you'll have... Now, I'm playing those pretty standard too, just running them up and back, but you could, you know, run them up one, ascend one, descend the next, whatever. Now, I mean, find your own little patterns, but doing that over a backing track and just traveling through different sections and just finding limitations like that is great for your brain because you're not just sticking to shapes, you're not just running shapes up and back, up and back. Um, let me show you a little trick with these too. If we pick a shape and restart on an octave, this is traveling diagonally. I have shown this before with some other videos, but such a great little pattern to understand and know through everything, yeah? So if we play the G minor blues, but instead of playing that octave note with the ring, I'm gonna slide across and restart the shape. Again. So I've just really played the first shape there, but traveled through all the octaves and used that, um, you know, that parallel shape. So check this out, slow. Restart. Restart. Now, I can do that with any shape, right? So why don't we pick one that's not as commonly used. Let's go to the third shape. Slide to the octave of it, restart. Slide to the octave. Now, you'll notice that, yeah, I am kind of just traveling through the positions that we played at the start anyways, but it's a completely different thought process. So when I'm doing the minor, so this will be easier to look at. Well, now I'm in the major position, right? But I'm just starting on the G. Again, same deal. When I'm here, oh really, I'm just in position 300. And then when I go across again, that's using the major, uh, the fifth position, sorry, just before the major. But different thought process because my phrasing is different, yeah? So limitations, great for improv. Knowing the shapes really well, of course, sticking to two strings, sticking to certain rhythms, traveling diagonally across that way as well. And another thing that I find really useful too, or two things actually, one being sequencing, which is a different topic in itself. Um, I do have another video on that somewhere. And the other one being making your own little arpeggios as well. So with the blues, because you're getting a couple of notes cut out, like the pentatonic is the same, you're not gonna get perfect arpeggios all the time. You're not gonna get you know, your minors and majors every single time. You'll get some little variations to it, but this is where it's kind of fun with the blues because you can really make your own little arpeggio shapes and travel them across. So let's do an example of that first here. So, okay, what if we use this first little minor one? And let's have a mess around. Let's do the first to the minor third, because that gives you that strong minor sound. Could go just to the fifth and the minor seventh. That'll give us a minor seventh arpeggio. But let's add some spice. Let's add that flat five. So now we get root to flat third, flat five, regular five to resolve, flat seventh. What if I took that through the idea I had before where we travel that through the octave sliding to the new root notes already? Slide, restart it. Slide again. So now we get a really cool little run. And you can see how it just ran and gave me a good little five note sequence too. So there's something else that's interesting there. It's one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. So just using these in creative ways and knowing your positions will really help that as well. Let's try another one, for example. Let's do, I don't know, let's do the third, oh no, we're doing that before. Let's do the fourth position. So just again, quickly, fourth position is... I'll show you a little trick with that in a minute too. Okay, so let's have a look at what we have for options. So what if we go, okay, let's do the root, let's do the flat third, but let's do the sixth this time, yeah? 
six is in minor six interval. So we get. Uh huh. Now after that, let's have a look at what we could possibly do. We could do the flat five to the five again, or maybe we could do the four to the five. Four to the five being rooted off the bass. So we've got. It's a nice little shape. It's interesting. And I probably prefer to slide it now. I'm playing it, so we get. Different sound, hey? So again, slowly. Slide to the root, repeat, watch the B string. And again, another really unique sound that you're not really going to be achieving just through picking a scale shape and running through. Yeah, having a bit of thought process there. Um, so experiment with arpeggios, create your own. Don't be too stale on them. Don't just look at sheets and look at runs other people have made. Try and be creative because then you're actually going to be using your shapes properly and getting to know them better. Um, now, check this out. I forgot to mention this before. When you're playing the last two positions of the blues, just keep this in mind that the root note, especially for this one, this is just a good little hack because people know their first and second positions really well. Third position, maybe if they're getting into all that, but fourth and five normally get lost in translation when you're first starting out doing these, yeah? So check out this for a hack. So we're doing them on G. Find that root note up here. So really, this, if I start it from here, it's just my first position again, and then if I go over to the next note, it's just the major again. The only variation is because we're starting on the A string, that B string comes up quicker, and we have to move that fret across on that string. So when I go to here, now I've got a shift just to accommodate that string, and it's the same for the major. Shift. And then all you're doing is to start on the E string, you're literally just adding a parallel or symmetrical um, note grouping, fret grouping, on the string above. So for mine, I check this out, it's normally, what I'll do is I'll come down it. That's the G, that's the finish, but we just add the same notes, or the same um, fret, sorry, as the A string on the E. Uh huh, and same on this one here, right? Check this out. Not including the blues note, but that's a good little hack. So, fourth position, there's the root. Yeah, and then for the last position, the fifth, there's the root of the major. And then you're back to the start. So yeah, that's just a good little hack for the blues is to um, really know where you are. So yeah, I hope that helps with your blues positions. Um, make sure you know them upside down, back to front. Uh, not always just starting off the root string as in the E string. That's I think a big thing that you know happens online because a lot of the shapes you'll see will be off that E string. But experiment, try them off different string sets, do them over backing tracks obviously as well. Um, and yeah, make sure you know your intervals and your notes as well. That's the key. But thanks guys, hope you enjoyed. Talk soon.